All right. So thank you again for joining me today uh, to learn more about our part-time and full-time MBA program. Uh, just uh, uh, just quickly, I wanted to mention, we will only be addressing MBA programs in this session uh, for master's programs. Uh, there is a webinar that's coming up on the 25th, so I would encourage you to sign up for that session if you're interested in master's of science in finance or accounting. Uh, but in this session, we'll only be addressing the MBA. Um, so let's get to it. Um, so uh, again, uh, my name is Yelena Page, and I work as an assistant director of admissions here at uh, BC's Carroll School of Management. On the call with me today uh, are two of my colleagues, uh, Colleen and Christine. So Colleen, would you like to come on and introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Colleen Labossier, and I'm also uh, an assistant director in the Carroll School of, of Management um, in the admissions office, and I've just recently joined about a month ago. So excited to be here. And Christine? Hello, my name is Christine. I'm the recently new admissions specialist here, and I hope you all have a good session with us today. Wonderful. So Colleen and Christine will be mon monitoring the chat room. So if you have questions during the presentation, uh, feel free to uh, write them in the chat room and one of them will respond. Um, and then we also have a full time MBA student with us on the call. Um, so I'll have Izzy introduce herself. So just tell us a little bit about your background um, and uh, why did you decide to apply to the MBA program and why you chose BC? Sure. So hi, everyone. My name is Izzy Wiseman. I am a first year MBA student uh, in the full time program at Boston College. I have a background in earth sciences. So I did my undergraduate degree in geology. And then I pursued a master's in earth and environmental science uh, right after graduating from undergrad in 2015. I then worked at a, na a national lab for a few years and then worked in environmental consulting and ultimately decided to pivot um, to a, a new career path um, and thought that the MBA, pursuing my MBA would be the, the right next step. Um, I wanted to pivot into either economics consulting or corporate, a more corporate finance type position and was able to land a, a summer internship this, uh, for this upcoming summer at Fidelity Investments in Boston. So really excited about that. And I decided to specifically come to BC because of the small class size. Uh, I wanted to form meaningful relationships with my professors, with my career advisors, with my classmates. Um, the location, I wanted to be in the Boston area. I wanted to go to a school that had a strong alumni network. Um, and because of my interest in economics consulting and finance, I knew that BC would prepare me well for, for both of those potential careers. Thank you, Izzy. Uh, so just quickly uh, about the agenda for today, uh, we'll tell you a little bit about Boston College. Uh, we'll talk about our uh, two different MBA programs, the full-time and part-time. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll go over the career development resources that we offer to our students. And then of course, we'll talk about application process and requirements. And as I mentioned, feel free to type in any questions in the chat room throughout the presentation. And uh, Colleen and Christine uh, will be monitoring them and answering them and anything else that we do not uh, get to answer during the chat times, uh, we'll try to address at the end. All right, so let's get to it. So Boston College, uh, we are a um, fine arts institution that's located in Chestnut Hill neighborhood of Boston Newton. Um, we are a Jesuit school, uh, so uh, the, the method of learning here uh, really focuses on um, get, uh, learning everything that you have while you're here in classroom and then giving back to the community. So there is uh, our, our students uh, uh, have a history of uh, volunteering and community service uh, while they are here at Boston College. Uh, we also uh, have a couple of fun facts to share with you. Uh, the location of Chest Chestnut Hill is not directly in the city of Boston, so you really do get that campus feel while you're in class. Uh, it's easily accessible by the public transportation, so there are buses that will take you up to Chestnut Hill, and also we are located on the final stop of the Green Line B branch. Um, some of the fun activities that you can um, engage in while you're at Boston College. 
I believe we're on mile 12 of Boston Marathon. So every marathon, every year on Marathon Monday, all of our students will uh, line up on Comab and uh, cheer on the runners. Uh, some other activities that we have every year, we have a red bandana football game and a uh, red bandana race here on campus. And uh, the red bandana events are commemorating one of the Boston College alumni that lost his life in the 9-11 attacks while he was helping evacuate people from the World Trade Center. Um, so again, the focus on alumni giving back to, to the community um, really sets the school apart. Um, so we'll talk about our full-time MBA class first. So the class that entered this fall, fall 2022, so Izzy's class, we enrolled about 76 students. And typically our MBA classes uh, are very small. So you can have anywhere between 75 to 100 um, in a cohort. The class that enrolled in fall 21 had about 100. Um, so it just varies every year. Um, so this year, the average GMAT was 645, the average GRE was 312, and uh, our students came with about a uh, little over four years of average work experience. And 35% of the enrolled class are women and 24% are international. Um, so really, the small class sizes allow you to uh, form better relationships, closer relationships with faculty, with your career advisors and get to know your uh, classmates better. It's a 57 year, uh, 57 credit program. So typically each class is about three credits and it's a two year program. Full-time MBA has a cohort model. So even though you may have any, anywhere between 75 to 100 students enroll in a class, we will split you into two different cohorts, which will make the classroom environment even more intimate. All classes in year one are seven weeks long. So your first semester is split into two seven week modules. So Izzy, do you wanna talk about the seven week, mo uh, seven week model for the MBA class? Uh, how did you uh, work through it? How did you adjust to being back in school? Yeah, so um, as Yelena was saying, um, rather than like most schools typically have a, a full semester where you're able to, you know, take accounting or take a class, you're taking uh, three or four classes sort of at the same time and then within seven weeks, uh, which can be really quite challenging, to be honest, um, especially for someone like me who didn't have a, a business background. Um, so really important to have strong time management skills. And I think once you sort of get a feel for how classes go, you can um, you can figure out how to, to do your work more efficiently. So maybe in the beginning, like problem sets are taking you a really long time in accounting, but eventually when you, uh, when you get, you know, maybe to the third or fourth week, you're spending less time than you were in the beginning. So definitely an adjustment uh, for me, it, it's, uh, it shouldn't be underestimated how, the amount of work uh, that you'll be sort of condensed and learning uh, in those seven weeks. Great. And uh, once you're done with, uh, you know, your first year, uh, you will, uh, all of our MBA students will um, seek an internship. So in between your first and second year, you'll have the summer to complete your internship. And Izzy, we've just chatted a little bit and you mentioned you have your internship uh, a lot, uh, already uh, aligned. So um, can you talk about um, how early did you get your internship? When did you start looking for internships and engaging with the career advisors? Yeah, so um, that's a great question. Um, so I, I think I uh, had my first round interview for Fidelity in mid-October and then my Super Day event um, I think it was the first week of November. And then a week after that was extended the offer and then had two weeks to accept or or reject. And so it all happened before Thanksgiving. I signed my offer letter. Um, I would say that is really early um, compared to, you know, just looking at my class and really even like friends that are in other um, MBA programs, the program that I applied to just re recruited really early and certain industries recruit um, much earlier than others. So 
I wouldn't say that um, that it was the norm necessarily to have your internship for the summer locked down by November. Um, and going back to your question about um, you know when did I start engaging with career advisor and and all of that, I would say I I really did my due diligence um, when I was deciding to come to BC. I I really relied on LinkedIn. I looked to see where BC MBA grads, you know, what companies they were placed in. I looked at the resources provided on the BC website that show the companies that typically recruit at BC. And I saw the position, the types of positions grads were getting. And if I could see myself one day, like following a similar path. And I, I reached out to the folks you know, at Fidelity, at Analysis Group, at PwC, like sort of at these companies where I saw a lot of B, uh, BC grads going and started those conversations basically um, like right when I decided to go to BC um, and then certainly once in the fall when, when school started. Um, and similarly, like day one, I started working with my dedicated career advisor um, Marilyn Eckelman, who was a tremendous help and and great resource. So, um, so I think it was a mix of preparing before I got to school, and then really once I like day one, I was reaching out to people, having coffee chats like immediately. Great. And so once you complete your internship, uh, our MBA students come back and do their second uh, second year. And in your second year, uh, it just uh, you take classes throughout the regular uh, semester, so typically three and a half to four months long. Um, and uh, you may take the classes in the evening with, because they're electives with the part-time MBA population. Um, a lot of our uh, students uh, who have interned over the summer um, get offers to continue working part-time um, during their second year. So a lot of them will keep their daytimes free and take classes in the evening to accommodate that part-time work schedule. So this is what your curriculum will look like uh, in year one and year uh, in year one in the first and second semester. So BC's MBA sets itself apart uh, from uh, some of the other MBA programs because it focuses on data analytics. So all of our full-time and part-time students must complete three data analytic, uh, analytics core classes uh, um, in their MBA program, which is not something that you typically see with other programs. Uh, you may be able to take data analytics classes in other programs, but they're, typ they're typically going to come as electives. But through communication with different corporate partners uh, who provided feedback that uh, you know, when they're hiring interns and later uh, MBA students for employment, they really wanted to see talent that's proficient in working with and analyzing data. Uh, so BC took this to heart and implemented it into our core curriculum, and it's been working really well for us uh, so far. So Izzy, you're done with your first semester. What was your favorite class? It's so funny. Um, as I've spoken with perspective students and even like friends and colleagues, people often ask me like what my favorite class is. And I might be the only one on earth that says accounting was their favorite class. Um, I learned, and I think it's in part because I was, you know, curious about it and wanted and really was excited to learn. But I really think it's the professor, um, Mark Bradshaw, who's the chair of the accounting department. He is phenomenal, just so brilliant, but then also an amazing teacher, um, truly someone who like, you know, doesn't judge if you ask any type of question, um, really, really wants every single person in the class to understand, you know, the material and he applies, uh, he applies our coursework to, to real world examples. So we, we look at actual companies' financial statements. Um, and so it felt like I was learning really applicable uh, really important applicable skills. Right. And um, I'm sure you had this question too when you were looking at the program and getting ready for your MBA. Um, knowing what you know now, um, would you advise candidates who don't have any business background, who are not coming from business, uh, uh, business degrees or similar degrees uh, to do anything in particular to prepare for maybe these accounting classes, data analytics classes? 
Yeah, you know, that's a that's a tough one to answer because I think it depends. So I think it might depend on, um, you know, folks, you know, backgrounds. I would say for me personally, I did have experience coding. And so I, I didn't really do any prep for data analytics um, just from observation and some, you know, from talking with some of my, my colleagues. You know, I think it was, if you've never coded or if, you know, maybe you were an English major and like had never used Excel, you know, maybe a little bit of pre, you know, reading might be helpful, but, but the class is really structured to be, to be for those students, to be for the student that has never touched it before. So um, I think it could only help, you know, if you have time and if you're curious to do a little pre, um, to pre-work. I did a little bit of accounting pre-work before I came to, um, before I came to BC, not much, you know, maybe 10 hours. Um, and I think, I think it helped, um, but I, I didn't, you know, I didn't go overboard with pre MBA coursework. I, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's really worth it. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Um, all right. So um, as we mentioned, first year is pretty structured. Uh, you do first and second semester in seven week modules. But when, when you move into your second year, this is where you're sort of allowed to build your curriculum. Um, and take electives that are based off of uh, your own interest. Um, so um, BC's MBA program, whether it's full-time or part-time, it's a generalist MBA. So we do not um, we do not um, ask our students to pick a concentration, uh, or we don't silo you into a specific area. You can really build your uh, you can build your program in your second year based off of electives that uh, appeal to you. So if you want to gain more data analytics. Uh, or quant finance um, skill set, you would take classes in those areas. Um, we also offer some um, experiential learning classes. I know there is a uh, sort of a consulting project with students in Germany that you can uh, take part in. This is something that was on pause uh, during a couple of years of the pandemic, but I know the faculty is working on bringing that back. So if you're looking into some global exposure classes, that would be one class for you to consider. And then we also have a STEM designated track as part of our full-time MBA program. And this will enable students to gain um, quantita uh, vital quantitative skills uh, for their post MBA careers. So if you are an international student um, looking to uh, stay in the US and work a little bit, uh, this will allow you to apply for the STEM extension OPT. So um, instead of just uh, being able to stay and work in the US for 12 months after, this, after your regular MBA program, if you participate in the STEM designated track, you can uh, apply for a 24 month extension for your OPT. Um, so when you're applying for, uh, for the program as part of your application for fall 2023, you'll see, uh, you will be prompted to answer whether you're interested in STEM designated track or not. Um, and uh, if you are admitted and decide to enroll, our academic advising staff will know what classes to sign you up for. Now, keep in mind that this will limit the elective classes that you can take during your second year because of the quantitative nature of the STEM designated track. So for part-time MBA uh, program, uh, we admitted about 100 students in the fall of 2020. 640 was the average GMAT and 296 was the average GRE. And our part-time students had a little more years of average work experience than our uh, full-time students and about 33% of part-time MBA class um, are women. Uh, so it's the same program. Again, it's 57 credits, but because it's a part-time MBA, it takes a little longer to complete. So on average, it takes about three and a half years for working professionals to complete the part-time MBA program. Um, so Izzy, uh, when you were applying to MBA programs, um, what made you decide to pursue the full-time option over part-time? Yeah, um, so this was a sort of internal struggle debate that I 
that I had. Um, I think in, initially when I uh, was thinking about going back to school to do my MBA, I was actually pretty set on doing the part-time MBA. Um, but then after discussions with folks from the admissions team at BC and uh, and sort of like internally, um, you know, with my my network, I think because I wanted to make such a big career pivot, it was really important for me to kind of dive in fully and really commit to the MBA program full time. Um, I also thought, you know, that it. it it would just be really challenging um, to to work in a pretty technical, you know, consulting job and do an MBA program at the same time. I, I just didn't think I th I think I would be selling myself short for from both perspectives. So um, I really give a lot of credit to people that are able to to work and go to school. But I thought personally, because of that big career pivot that I wanted to do, um, that it would be best for me to to commit full time to to the MBA. Great. Um, so typically we'll see students who are looking to shift careers in our full-time MBA programs um, and then students that are uh, quite happy with uh, where they are professionally with their company but are looking to sort of advance within, uh, within the company, um, they'll, they'll uh, typically pursue the part-time MBA option. Now, uh, because it's a part-time MBA program, it is extremely flexible. Uh, we do say that on average, students take about three and a half years to complete. However, if you need more time, uh, you can definitely take the time to complete the program. So three and a half to five years, I would say. Um, it's self-paced, uh, so you can take um, one class in one semester, two classes in next semester. Um, so it, it's very tailored uh, to, it's tailored to accommodate your, um, you know, professional life and personal life. Now, for our part-time MBA program, you do have to have an on-campus presence. Only about 30% of coursework is offered online. Uh, most of it, you will have to have an on-campus uh, on presence. Classes are typically offered uh, in the afternoon at 4.30 or at um, 7, uh, 7 p.m. Uh, so just something to consider. Um, and, uh, you know, you may want to, you, you may want, you, if you take two classes, you may schedule them on two different dates, uh, two different dates in a week. So you'll, you may have to be on class twice a week. Um, you can also look into scheduling them in the same day if there are, if there's an opportunity for you to take a 4.30 class and then a 7 p.m. class. Um, on, on the same day. So you may be on campus only once a week, or you can take one class online and one class in person. So that way you're only on campus once a week. Um, commuting is pretty easy to Boston College campus. There's parking available and it's very affordable. Um, so if you are coming from, uh, you know, out of town, if you're working anything anywhere on the 95 stretch from Burlington to Waltham, um, it's uh, fairly easy to get to campus. We also offer advanced standing credit for part-time MBA. So for individuals who completed um, business degrees, uh, so who have bachelors of business administration um, and um, you know, different majors, uh, you may be considered for an advanced standing. Uh, so we will waive you uh, for up to 15 credits. So that can shorten the amount of time that you spend in the part-time MBA program. You do have to meet certain criteria to obtain that waiver. Typically, your degree cannot be more than five years old, and you have to have a B or better in every single class. And your degree has to be from an institution that's AACSB accredited, which is an accreditation for all the business schools. Uh, so just keep this in mind uh, when you're considering your options. Other than that, the curriculum is pretty identical. The only difference is you're not taking classes in that seven week modules, part-time students take them throughout the whole semester. Um, so you still do, you, you still have that three, uh, three part data analytics core that you will need to complete for your MBA. Um, so all the core classes are the same, the elective classes are the same. Um, the difference is you're taking classes in the evening as opposed to full-time students who are taking classes during the day in their first year. Um, so culture at Carroll School of Management. So Izzy, can you talk a little bit about a day in the life of an MBA student? Uh, so what does your typical day look like? Yeah, sure. Um, so I, I really enjoy being on campus. Um, I 
yeah, I don't really like love working from my from my home. Um, so I tend to get to school like around 8.30. I usually go into the grad lounge, which is on in the Carroll School um, in our building in Fulton Hall. And I basically just like park up there and, and work um, for a bit before class starts, um, which, you know, assuming I would have a, an 11 a.m. class, which is what we were scheduled for this past uh, semester. Um, and the grad lounge is a really nice place because a lot of, you know, that's where that's where we get to hang out. Um, and like the, the Carroll School students, the grad MBA students. Um, so I typically do some work before class, you know, a little bit of socializing as well. Um, maybe grab a coffee before and then head to class, which uh, I believe they're two hours and there's usually like a five to 10 minute break in the middle. Um, and then if I'm staying on, on campus all day, you know, if I have another class that day, definitely have lunch, maybe again in the grad lounge with pretty much the whole class um, or head to one of the little coffee shops or, or lunch spots on campus, get back to class. And then I usually leave um, I usually try to get home um, around right after class ends, usually get home around 430 and then I, I walk my dog, um, maybe cook dinner, and then um, I do usually work for a few more hours um, kind of before I go to sleep. I try to finish at nine o'clock, um, kind of a New Year's resolution is to try not to work so late um, and then up again and, and back back at it for the next day. Right. Uh, so how much time would you say you spend on, uh, you know, each class outside of the classroom? Mm. It's it's varied uh, pretty dramatically. I would say like for data analytics, um, because I have a, a pretty I had a pretty strong background in it before attending, um, I could like kind of zip through assignments pretty quickly. But then for other classes like um, like marketing was really reading heavy, accounting was was challenging. Um, I would spend, gosh, I don't even I don't even know if I can like think of a number that that makes sense. Um, I guess uh, because of the nine p.m. new curfew, I guess I I would try I would work pretty late, you know, till ten thirty again, starting at eight a.m. that day. So they were pretty long days. Um, but that's because I took my courses really seriously. I like really wanted to absorb what I was reading rather than skim. And I've gotten kind of a little bit better about uh, being more efficient with my time. But you're given work that could that could be endless. Like you could literally work 24 seven. So you have to, I think part of the challenge, um, which which you'll face one day at, at a company is is like learning when to stop and when to prioritize and focus more on something uh, on some things versus others. Right. And um, what's your class environment like? Is it competitive? Is it collaborative? Uh, what are the professors uh, like? Uh, some of the classes are they case based? Are they more tests, quizzes, writing assignments? Yeah. Um, so it's it's definitely. I guess it would be a mix of all of the types of assignments. I, d I didn't want to say it was a mix of being like competitive and not it's I have not um, I have not experienced any competitive, uh, you know, sort of feelings with between any of my my classmates. Um, very collaborative people are extremely helpful um, and really like want each other to succeed like everyone is kind of like fist bumping each other before exams and, um, you know, very encouraging and very helpful. Um, in terms of like case base, we, we, read, we read a lot of cases, a lot of Harvard Business Review cases um, for marketing, for a lot of the managing, uh, the management classes, uh, you know, which means like cold calling during class. Um, you know, you really have to be able to think, think on your feet um, we do get a lot of problem sets for like the finance, accounting, um, and data classes, a lot of group projects in some, you know, you'll do a group project in, in any type of class. Um, so kind of be, be prepared for really all of the above. Right. And, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, all of our grad students are required uh, to complete some community service before graduation. Have you looked into your community service opportunities? 
or have you done your community service yet? I haven't done it, it yet, but I do know um, like the the community service work that I that I want to do, and I like that. Um, I guess the requirements are so flexible that um, you know you can really tailor this experience to like be personal and meaningful to you. And so I, um, since like young years, I I've played squash and I really enjoy the sport and. Um, everywhere I've lived, I've been a part of these nonprofit uh, organizations that help teach folks how to to play squash and then also offer tutoring services as well and like helping prepare folks to apply to to college. And so I'm gonna plan to um, to do my community service volunteering with the organization that's located in Boston. and I'm really excited to do that. Right. And before we move into the career development overview, um, are you part of any clubs, organizations, or are you involved with any extracurricular activities outside of your immediate class? Yeah, so I also have a graduate assistantship with the um, at, at BC, and it's completely unrelated to the Carroll School. So it's with um, the Vice Provost for Research, the Office of Research Security, Integrity, and Compliance. And it's a it's a paid position, and um, I spend about fifteen hours a week working with them. And it's uh, I really enjoy it, although it can be challenging, kind of balancing that with uh, with my you know MBA responsibilities. But I like that it's exposed me to an entirely different group at Boston College, um, and who are all really nice and uh, really nice and smart people um, while doing meaningful work there as well. Um, I did sign up to join like a million clubs, but I think between the recruiting and the schoolwork and the grad assistant position, I definitely didn't participate in them as much as I would have liked to. So now that I have sort of got my bearings, um, I'm definitely planning to participate more in the graduate women in business group uh, in particular. Great. Um, so uh, for everyone who's listening, we do have a Graduate Management Association, which is an umbrella uh, at the Carroll School of Business. So our, our business school grad students uh, that run different clubs and organizations. So women in business would be one of them. We have a finance club. We have a net impact pl club, invest in kids. Um, Future Leaders advise, Advocacy Advisors is another club that focuses more on social impact and social issues at the school. Uh, we have the Black MBA Students Club, so plenty of opportunities for our students to engage in. And then on the larger college level, there's also an association that oversees all the graduate student clubs and organizations. So if you're uh, interested uh, in getting involved, plenty of opportunity on campus to do so. Um, so with career development overview, we have a small career team. So our programs are small, so our career services team is small. Uh, there are uh, two MBA career advisors. So uh, Isabel, you mentioned um, Marilyn Eckelman. So she's your career advisor. There's also Donna Modica, uh, who works with our full-time MBA students. Uh, and then we have, an, uh, we have a career advisor for MSF and MSA program. Uh, her name is Gloria Chu. So uh, three career advisors on staff. There's a recruiting manager, Kate Stadler, and she's responsible for sourcing internship opportunities and employment opportunities for our grad students. So not just the full-time MBA, but MS um, and part-time MBA students if they ever need to use career services. And there's also an office manager um, available to help you out as well. Uh, so Izzy, talk, talk a little bit about how you worked with Marilyn and uh, whether there are any networking opportunities uh, available to BC MBA students to connect with alums or companies, uh, career fairs, have you attended any um, uh, throughout your first semester of the program? Yeah, so um, I think before you get to BC, you know, once you've accepted your spot, you uh, you do a pretty intensive, uh, like, per kind of like a personality test um, that helps you, uh, and then you you get the results, and it helps you kind of reflect on on what's important to you from like a 
for your future career. And so the first day that I met with Marilyn, it was like the first day of the MBA program. And, and we walked through my results and, um, and it sounds like a little bit cheesy, but it was actually really helpful to see uh, sort of these trends and things that were I like about myself that I didn't necessarily uh, recognize. And so sort of starting on that note, um, Marilyn and I would meet really frequently. Um, I, I would email her all the time. Um, I would meet with her like once a week. And I really feel like she took the time to get to know me on a personal level uh, and would um, offer to connect me with uh, you know, her prior students that she had advised that worked at companies that I, would, that I was interested in in learning more about. Um, and she, you know, gave me advice, uh, helped me prepare for my interviews, you know, gave me advice about how to, to sort of craft my story. And, um, and with her and Kate and the whole admissions office, you know, would advise me on, uh, you know, which companies to sort of like really pursue. And, um, and at BC, we had throughout the fall, and I'm sure it's going to continue, but we had a lot of companies come on campus and give presentations. And I attended like so many of those, and I found those to be really helpful in terms of making a personal connection with someone that works at a company that I was interested in. I learned a lot about the company and, you know, specific internship or program. And uh, it was often like the catalyst for, you know, further conversations that happened after that initial um, you know, meeting. And so I would strongly advise to, to keep an eye out on any uh, you know, company that is visiting the BC MBA program specifically because they, they want to recruit from our school. And so um, you, know, you sort of have an advantage there already. Great. Um, so as of right now, our students um, have access to weekly MBA focused career newsletters. I know Kate sends those out every week to different groups. So full-time students will get their own uh, career newsletter. Part-time students will get their own and MSA and MSS students will get their own separate career uh, letters. And um, they typically talk about different opportunities that are available to those specific groups. One-on-one uh, -on -one career advising, so you will definitely have a career advisor um, as a student here. So if you're in the MBA program, it would be Marilyn or Donna. And if you're in one of the MS programs, that would be Gloria. Um, there are plenty of online career development tools and resource guides, I think. There's an Eagle Exchange platform. I don't know, Izzy, if you've used it. Um, I think it's I can't remember the exact name, but it connects you with different alums, uh, different BC alums. So if you wanted to connect with an alum, you can do it through the internal platform. Uh, employer information and networking sessions, like you mentioned, we have different employers come to campus to connect with students. Um, job postings, interview prep. Um, have you taken any interview prep um, workshops? So they did offer... Um particularly for consulting, folks that wanted to pursue consulting, um, they offered a lot of case prep interviews. Um, like they had Mark Constantino who wrote, you know, the, the book on the consulting interview, come to, come to campus twice. Um, and I did not participate in that only because the jobs that I, that I was applying to didn't require the case interview. Um, but many of my colleagues did and found it tremendously helpful. So um, that's a really unique and really awesome opportunity that they offer. Great. Um, and then you can always tap into different student groups. So I know for the GMA, like the marketing club, they may have a panel of alumni that are in marketing field, come and talk to our students. Same thing with finance club, um, the consulting club. So uh, just make sure that you're connected, uh, that if you, you know, do come to BC, take advantage of everything that's available to you. Um, the success will be, you know, the success in landing an internship or a job uh, 
will really depend on how much effort you put into it. So it's important to go to all of those employer information and networking sessions because that's how you get the connections and that's how people will remember you once you start applying for jobs. Um, and for part-time students, I know that your career journey is a little different, so you may not necessarily need as much help or to, to connect with career services. However, if you ever find yourself in a situation where you need your resume looked at, your LinkedIn profile looked at, or uh, you, need, you need a job. I know a couple of students during COVID uh, that uh, their employment was affected because the industry, their industry just stopped operating. They were able to get to work with career services uh, to get some MBA internships that later turned into full-time employment. So. Um, it's available to part-time MBA students as well, um, but again, because you're on a different um, career track, you may not need to tap into career resources as much as full-time MBA students do. Uh, so here are some of the uh, MBA career outcomes. Um, so each year, uh, it, it's a little different. Um, so for class that graduated last year, most of them went into finance and then consulting. The class that graduated a year before them, it was the other way around. Um, so I think uh, employment um, and job functions really uh, reflect the uh, greater Boston area job market. So we are saturated with finance, consulting, tech, bio. Um, so that's where most of our graduates will land, um, not, to met, uh, not to say that they don't go into other parts of the country, but our presence is typically uh, stronger in the Northeast or generally in the Boston area. So average total could compensation. Add... Oh, sorry, could I add one thing? Sure. Um, I noticed someone earlier in the chat asked if like your summer internships are paid and, and they are. So, um, okay. so yeah, you will just wanted to add that in as well. Awesome. Thank you for that. Uh, so this is the um, average total compensation for a class that um, just graduated last year and uh, internship placement rate uh, for uh, last year's class uh, as well. And you can see the list of companies where most of our, uh, where our um, students end up, uh, end up at after graduation. So like I said, because we are where we are, a lot of a lot of this will be consulting, finance, um, uh, biotech, pharma. So um, it just reflects the market that where school is located. So we'll talk about uh, the application process. Uh, so full time MBA application deadlines. Uh, we have a January seventeenth deadline coming up next week. Uh, so if you apply by January 17th, we owe you a decision by March 15th. You may receive a decision before March 15th, though, but the last, uh, the deadline for the final notification uh, is March 15th. This is also our uh, recommended deadline for international students. So if you are an international student, try to apply by January 17th. The last deadline for international students will be on March 7th. Um, and this is because of all the paperwork that it takes to make sure that your, uh, you know, visa is secured on time and that you can plan your travel to campus if admitted. For part-time MBA, uh, so we just wrapped up admission for the spring semester that starts on next, to, next week, Tuesday. Um, and then our first round deadline for part-time MBA program that uh, starts in August, so in the fall of 2023, will be January 17th, just like our uh, full-time MBA deadline. And then the final deadline will be on the July 11th. So plenty of time for uh, working professionals to work on their MBA applications for fall. This is what we require for the MBA program. So it's a pretty straightforward application. We do require a resume, an essay, your academic transcripts uh, from your undergrad. If you went to a, uh, if you went to a community college or if you transferred from one institution to the other, uh, make sure to submit those transcripts as well. Uh, GMAT or GRE, we do recommend that you apply with the test. However, you can apply for a GMAT waiver. To qualify to get your GMAT waived, you need to have at least three years of professional work experience. Your GPA has to be at 3.0 uh, or higher. Um, 
and um, you can apply. There's a there's a uh, there's a link to the GMAT uh, application waiver appli uh, online with the application uh, where our uh, application uh, on on our on our website. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, um, and then if you're an international student who studied outside of the United States uh, and your university did not use English as a medium of instruction, you will have to submit a TOEFL or IELTS. However, if you worked in the US for at least two years, um, that uh, language requirement can be waived. And we do ask for one letter of recommendation, so a professional letter of recommendation. Um, so it can come from somebody that you worked with. Uh, it can be a supervisor, a colleague, a client, if you run your own business. And then interviews are by invitation only. Um, all right. So we'll go over the tuition and aid. So if you are admitted into one of our programs, you will automatically be considered for a possible merit-based scholarship. Um, so all admitted candidates are considered for a scholarship. If you receive a scholarship, you will receive it at the time of admission. So your offer of admission and your scholarship letter will come at the same time. Um, so for full-time MBA, the cost of tuition is a flat rate per semester. For part-time MBA, because it's a flexible program and not everyone takes the same number of classes every semester, it's a per credit cost. So it's $20,012 per credit, one class is three credits. So you can take one class or uh, two classes per semester. I would not suggest taking more than two classes if you're working during the day. Um, so that way you can sort of uh, determine um, how much you will be spending on tuition. Um, as I mentioned, uh, merit-based scholarships and fellowships are available. Uh, we also offer assistantships for full-time students. So easy, you have an assistantship. You talked about that a little bit. Uh, so you may be offered an assistantship as part of your scholarship package, or you can apply for an assistantship um, ad additionally. So Izzy, how did you get your assistantship? Were you offered it on, upon admission or did you find it um, on your own? I found it on my own. Um, so I, yeah, there's a, a website that was provided. I think I found it on the on the BC NBA website, and um, and yeah, I just found it and applied and had one interview, and then and then got it. So it's pretty um, painless. <laughs> Great. Uh, now, uh, assistantships really um, aren't there to. They, they don't. They don't. They're not. Um, uh, they're not going to be paying for your tuition. It's just a small stipend that you can use for whatever expenses you have, correct? Correct, yeah. Um, I think, yeah, there's like a, a certain hourly rate. Um, I think for me, I am working 15 hours a week and it ends up being like $1,200 a month before tax. Okay. That's helpful. Um, and then if you are a U.S. military uh, veteran, uh, there are definitely GI, uh, GI Bill Yellow Ribbon benefits that you can tap in. And uh, we do have an office here that works with all of our military um, students that can help you figure that out. Um, and then financial aid, if you are a U.S. citizen, permanent resident, uh, you are eligible to apply for federal financial aid. Uh, so that process is separate from uh, your scholarship. Uh, so you need to work with a student financial services office to determine which type of aid uh, you will be using uh, to offset your tuition. So um, let's see, what's next? Um, so if you have more questions about the application process or um, if you wanna connect with the current student, definitely schedule some time to chat with admissions team. We have a uh, BC MBA ambassadors email that you can um, send an email to if you want to connect with the current student and somebody will respond. Uh, we have about six graduate assistants, two first year MBAs and five, oh, well, that's, that's seven grad assistants, and five uh, second-year MBAs that work for the admissions team um, that can connect with you and talk to you about their experience. Um, so start your application as early as you can. I would say do not wait for that deadline to hit, um, because if you admit earlier, uh, if you submit your application earlier, you may be reviewed uh, for admission earlier. So don't Feel the need to wait for January 17th to hit submit, uh, feel free to submit it a lot earlier. Uh, it's just easier for the admissions team to manage it. 
because on the 17th, we'll get like 300 applications and you may need to wait a little bit for uh, to hear back from us.